big event, like, oh my god, short rows, like, stop, call the press, get them on the phone, I'm doing short rows. <laughs> Hi, today I wanted to talk about some of the things I wish I knew when I started knitting. I have been knitting for about two years now-ish, um, and I originally, I was a crocheter. That was kind of my, my intro foray into the fiber arts, if you will. Um, God, that was the most annoying sentence. I've ever said and there's a lot of competition. So I was a crocheter originally and then I made the transition into knitting. There were a lot of reasons for that. I think crochet is really fun but what I wanted to do was make garments and crochet garments just really weren't doing it for me. I don't know they just didn't hang right off my body and they didn't fit me right and I just don't like the fabric really that you get when you crochet. Like I some people do crochet garments really really well. I just didn't have the patience for it and I just saw all of these knitters on Instagram and stuff just making these incredible garments and I was like I I want to be you I would like to do what you do so I had tried to learn how to knit originally this is actually kind of a funny story I the reason I I am a knitter these days um, is actually because I had an ex tell me that he didn't think I could which if you know anything about me that's how you get me to do something is to tell me that you don't think I can because then I will just to spite you and that's exactly what happened I wanted to make a blanket for an ex who was being I don't even know I don't even know what the word is because he was in a military for another country basically he had to go overseas to go serve in another country's military I have this thing where I only date foreign guys by the way just that's let's get that out there yeah so he he was leaving and i was like oh my god i'm gonna knit you a blanket hi sorry editing maddie here i don't think i explained this very clearly but basically i said that and then he responded with i don't think you understand how hard knitting is because i didn't know how first of all how fucking long that would take and second of all that he was the fucking worst ambitious yes misguided absolutely i started trying to knit and i will see if i can dig up pictures i don't really want to look at pictures from that time in my life but like i will do this for you and i will try to find pictures of how that went so after he left i went over to my friend's house and we sat down and we were like we're gonna learn how to knit uh we went to michael's we got some cheap ass knitting needles and some acrylic yarn and we like sat in her room for four hours trying to learn how to knit and her mom thought it was like the funniest thing that's ever happened so this is what we came up with after that one day and i was like you know what Maybe this isn't for me. Maybe he was right. I shelved it. I was going through a lot of life changes, so it wasn't really the best time to pick up a hobby. I came back to it after I moved to Seattle and got settled. I came back to Fiber Arts through crochet. But look at me now. I said I couldn't do it, and so now I have a YouTube channel about it, so ha <laughs> ha. Hope you and your receding hairline are doing really well. Basically, that's how I started knitting, was out of spite. And I think that's a really fitting way to start a hobby. I think if you're gonna, if you need a push to start a hobby, have an ex-boyfriend tell you that they don't think you're smart or capable. And you can do almost anything with that, with that little nudge. I think that would be a really good service. Actually, we could rent out like really toxic men to just like tell girls how they don't think they're good enough to do something. I. That would work on me, is the problem. <laughs> that would get me to do things. Like, I don't think you're good enough to clean your apartment. I'd be like, fuck you. <laughs> fuck the patriarchy. <laughs> Just like frantically clean my apartment. Anyway, entirely aside, basically that's how I started knitting. I was a crocheter turned knitter. And yeah, that comes with a unique set of advantages and disadvantages, I think. And I've just sort of amassed, I don't want to say amassed knowledge, but like I've learned a lot over the last two years of my life going from making you know that wonky little rectangle eventually making things that weren't as wonky but still rectangles to making full sweaters so it's a it's a process for sure i think that's the main thing i learned was that this isn't one of those things that you can just decide to be good at because i have that problem where if i'm not like instantly good at something i used to like just quit immediately like i just didn't care to learn because if i'm not good at it i don't want to do it and that was something that I think knitting has really taught me is that you have to push through learning curves and you have to give yourself time. So that's something to think about because if you're anything like me, 
it's gonna be rough in the beginning and I was really pissed off a lot of the time <laughs> that I was knitting but it does get better you just have to stick with it and yeah so that's kind of lesson number one things take time skills take time to learn and grow and there's so many things to learn with knitting that you can be learning for the forever which is crazy it's just such an old hobby and there's so many skills to learn and so many new things to do so yeah that's lesson number one lesson number two and this is also from my beginning days was the difference between garter stitch and stockinette i was so confused in the beginning because i was doing knit stitches and just knit stitches which makes you know garter stitch fabric but i didn't understand why it didn't look like knitting in my mind like what knitting looked like to me which was stockinette so right side wrong side knits and pearls i could not comprehend why doing a knit stitch over and over wasn't creating what i thought was knitting so that was really frustrating and then eventually i figured out that you have to knit on the right side pearl on the wrong side and that's how you make stockinette <laughs> but for some reason that discovery took me months of like anger because i would do it and i'd get so frustrated i'd feel like i'm just gonna crochet <laughs> and so i would just crochet because i knew how to do that i'm just stubborn is honestly the moral of this video i'm just stubborn <laughs> and just don't be stubborn if you want to learn something the difference between knits pearls stockinette garter that's like foundational knitting that that, that just took me a, a while to figure out in the beginning which I don't think it's uncommon, but I'm sure people do figure that out faster if they're more willing to learn. So another really big thing that kind of, I mean, this was the moment where knitting really clicked for me was when I learned continental knitting, when I learned how to hold my knitting correctly. So if you're a crocheter that's trying to get into knitting, what I would recommend to you is to knit continental. I'll insert like a video or a picture or something right here of what I mean by knitting continental versus knitting English. If you're a crocheter, you already know how to hold yarn continental because that's how you hold yarn to crochet. So for me, knitting English just felt so wrong. It just wasn't working. And then once I figured out how to knit continental, it just clicked and then I was knitting. So that was a really big moment in my, <laughs> in my learning was learning about continental versus English. And I think some people don't really get into that until later in their knitting, but if you are coming from a crochet background, I strongly recommend that you knit continental. It's also just faster. Um, this is a big debate, I think, like which is better, and I'm not saying one is better than the other. I think however you knit is great, and I love that for you. Continental does have some perks, like knitting faster, less strain on your wrists, sort of, I think. I'm not a doctor. But English also has its benefits, like especially in color work knitting, English is so much easier. And now I'm at a place where like trying to learn English is so hard, I don't... I've tried because it would make my life easier when doing color work, but I just can't get my hands to do that. I don't know why. Next up, gauge. A gauge is still something I struggle with, honestly. So gauge swatching, basically, you knit a tiny little square in some specific amount of stitches and rows and stitches and rows here i'll put a picture here that explains that because that's also helpful to know like the anatomy of your knitting i guess so you go stitches and then rows and you get a certain size square and it should measure to like four by four usually is what it is and if it measures too big that means your gauge is too big so you need to either go down a needle size or use a smaller gauge of yarn or if your square is too small that means you either need to go up a needle size or up a yarn weight that's like the basics of gauge like don't ask me any more than that because i can't tell you <laughs> and gauge is important because if you're knitting something with too small of a gauge the whole garment is going to end up being too small or with too big of a gauge your garment's going to be too big so you you do want a gauge swatch which is something i still have to convince myself to do i saw i think it was tamara from Starcross Knits, I'm sure it was because it was really poetic. She said that like knitting a gauge swatch, she sort of views it as almost like a promise to herself, which is just like a beautiful way to say that and has really helped me really make gauge swatches <laughs> because it can be tedious. You feel like I could be knitting the actual garment right now, but like you're promising to yourself that you're gonna do this thing correctly and that you have that little piece of fabric to like, keep you going throughout the process and like to look back on and be like, oh, Look at you, sweater. You used to be a square. And much in the way I think parents feel when raising children. I'm joking. Yeah, no, so that gauge swatching is important and it is something that you need to do. 
so that was another another thing I learned way too late I could do an entire video on fiber and like the pros and cons of different types of fiber I hate it when random people on LinkedIn message me that's horrifying don't do that beside the point I could do an entire video on fiber and the different like pros and cons of each type of fiber and when to use certain types and when not to use certain types the fiber that you're using is important and my like standard advice would just be to use a similar fiber to what the pattern used for their sample. Like if you see a pattern knit up like 100% merino, I wouldn't go out of my way to get a different fiber than merino. Obviously there's a lot of nuance there, like yarn is expensive and if you need to use acrylic, there's nothing wrong with that. I w my advice would be the best that you can to stick with the recommended fiber for the pattern that you're knitting. I'm gonna let that stop. I think they're done. So that's just my standard advice with like no nuance to it. Obviously there is a lot of nuance in this discussion and again maybe in the future I'll do an entire video on fibers because I, I do think it's very interesting. Yeah that's advice-ish. I see this happen with a lot of new knitters and I'm saying this as somebody that did this but when you start knitting it's really easy to fall into the trap of knitting only bulky patterns like really bulky patterns because it's quick it's easy and I think a lot of companies like Wool and the Gang really push that narrative on to new knitters. It's really approachable and use this $20 a ball roving that'll fall apart when you wear it once but it'll knit so fast and then you knit a garment and you did it. I get it because I did it. Like it was approachable and it was quick and it felt good to do but the problem with garments like that is they aren't going to hold up. Roving I'm talking about like this type of yarn. It's just not built to last. These bulky, thick, like multiple C thick yarns are, they're obviously gorgeous and people can make beautiful stuff with them, but they don't hold up to everyday wear well. And if your goal is to knit pieces that are going to last you forever, I wouldn't recommend using that yarn. But I feel like it is so pushed on new knitters in the kind of community that it's so easy to just be like okay well everybody starts here I'm just gonna start here and then you fall into it and it's like this is amazing I knit an entire sweater in a week I am a god which is cool it's awesome it's a great feeling I get it but if your goal is to make pieces that are going to last you forever I think you need to come to terms with the fact that the actual production of that piece is going to take a while but in the grand scheme of things that shouldn't deter you from doing the thing because then it will last you. You're gonna get out what you put in, basically. And if you put in a lot of hours and a lot of time, that garment, most of the time, is going to last you a lot longer than a garment that you kind of just like, you know, that was me knitting with bulky needles. If that's what you want to do, that's great. Like, I love that for you. Sometimes you need instant gratification. I get it, trust me. So just sort of like, take a step back and think about that. The longevity of the piece and the longevity of the thing that you're making and putting this time into, because even bulky patterns, like you're gonna be putting a lot of time into it already. So if I could go back to my, my younger, <laughs> my younger, my younger self, something it would be to, to put down, put down the bulky yarn after that first project and just start knitting at reasonable gauges. <laughs> with peace and love. But yeah, I think another thing that was kind of a shock to me was that a sweater isn't and shouldn't be just four rectangles sewn together. Because a lot of the patterns that are catered to you as a beginner are super basic, which is great. You need to start somewhere. The problem is when you're knitting something without any sort of shaping or any sort of short rows or any short, sort of intentional construction, it's not going to fit in the way that you want it to fit most likely and by that I mean I was looking for fits that were aligned with commercial garments and when I was knitting these kind of shapeless garments they weren't sitting right and it was really discouraging because I was putting in so much effort into a piece and it just wasn't laying on my body in a way that I felt was flattering and that's really frustrating so if that's happening to you you might want to consider taking taking a dive into learning short rows and learning um, some shaping techniques and maybe starting on some more advanced patterns, which I know can be really scary at first. I remember I was terrified to do short rows for the first time because everybody hypes it up like it's some big event, like, oh my god, short rows, like, stop, call the press, 
get them on the phone, I'm doing short rows. But it's really not that bad. <laughs> I swear to you, once you do it, you'll be like, oh. <laughs> oh. When you're learning new techniques like that, the amazing thing about being a knitter in this time is YouTube. Because you can just Google anything that you want to learn. Which is an insane, like, think about the past, the history of knitting. We are like the first round of people that have had that ability to look up videos showing us how to do something. Like, that's a crazy advantage. Utilize it in everything, I think. But especially crafts that are so historic. Centuries and centuries of knowledge that have been passed to us that we now have access to on the internet. Whereas in the past, it was much more relegated to who you knew and if they knew how to do this. Or if you could get access to somebody that did know how to do this in your immediate physical area. Now that's everywhere, which is fucking amazing. So utilize the internet is another really big lesson I learned and something that I wish I did more of because, again, I'm a really stubborn person. And so if I see something written out in directions, I'm like, I can figure it out. Like, no, I don't need to watch a video. I can figure it out. <laughs> but like, it's not, just watch the fucking video. It's not, you're not losing by needing to look something up. I'm talking directly to myself with that because it's a problem. Just look it up, just watch a video and I promise you, it's not as bad as it sounds. Short rows, any sort of like, trying to think of another technique that's as intimidating as short rows were. Yeah, there's videos for everything. And there's a lot of really amazing teachers on online. Handmade by Florence. Her videos are an incredible resource. I, I find her, her style of teaching really helpful for me. So you might wanna check her out. I'll link a couple other resources that I've used in the description box. But yeah, I think that's like the main, the main things I, I wish I knew when I started knitting. And then obviously, I'm sure there is more things I could think of, so I might have to eventually do a revision to this episode, but as of right now, and like the thought I put into it at this point, those are a lot of the things I think I wish I knew, and that I would go back in time and tell myself. But the great thing about knitting in any hobby, honestly, is that you're gonna get there in your own time. I don't think there's any anything to gain by putting like immense pressure on yourself in a hobby. I think you're doing this because you want to and because it's fun. So let it be fun. Yeah, I don't know. Get there in your own time, and you will get there in your own time. If you have a goal to do something, like if you have a goal to make a really well-fitting sweater, you will eventually get there if you just keep trying to make that sweater. You will learn as you go. And that's like the beauty of hobbies and the beauty of being a human. That's kind of a philosophical take, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's just the great thing about being alive, having the ability to learn. You're always going to be gaining knowledge even through things that may seem like they were kind of flops or failures. Those things aren't really failures because you learned from them and you're going to use that knowledge to eventually get to the thing that you wanted to make to begin with, which I think is great. I think that's all I really have for you. I'm sorry this wasn't really like a cohesive list. I just really wanted to chat about learning how to knit, my thoughts on that process and hopefully you found any of these useful. But yeah, um, if you guys have anything to add, in the comments that you would give as advice to new knitters. I think that would be a really sweet little little comment section to kind of people can come back to maybe and see some advice would be great. I think there's always value in community and value in sharing knowledge amongst each other. And as I said earlier, that's the beauty of the internet to me. Anyway, yeah, thank you for listening to this. Um, I hope you got something out of this. And I hope you're having an amazing morning, afternoon, evening, night, whatever, wherever you are. Thank you so much for being here. And you guys are all really lovely people. I wanted to mention that earlier. I've been having a blast just chatting with you guys in the comments. It's been really fun for me. So thank you guys for being so lovely and like kind. I'm having a great time. And I hope you are as well. And I hope I'll see you again soon. And take care. Bye.